Hey guys, my name is Jesse Mew, and welcome back to Adam's Quest. In the last episode, our tribe survived their very first wildfires, a tragedy that only came to an end when Van Keer himself surprised us with a very unexpected rainstorm. So now we have some more food to eat, but the uh, lingering remnants of the fire is not likely to disappear anytime soon. We have rings of ashes off in the distance, and we also have just the fear that has been instilled into some of our creatures, especially the ones by the nursery. They were not expecting this place to uh, be so dangerous. This was supposed to be their safe haven right by the waterside. But it was actually the presence of a particular creature, Melody, who might be known as the Herald of Flames from here on out. Once she arrived, it seemed like the fires popped out of the grass one by one. So it seems as if she has uh, birthed a new role for her family, one that she's not too proud to carry, but that she has slowly begun to accept. So Dukirvan, who just came from the fires himself, is quite surprised to find this creature blocking his path, though I feel like he's going to find a little bit of a connection with her. Something that he definitely was not expecting to have find in somebody so weak. Because without any claws, she is actually very, very feeble. But this might be a good way for him to finally learn that it's not actually all about strength. There are some things in uh, this world that are even more important than the brute strength that he's known for like the connections that he severed with his family. Then meanwhile, we have some very, very unique families blooming on this side of the island. This little baby is honestly the most adorable thing I have ever seen. Little Honeycomb strikes me as somebody who would be a little bit clumsy, maybe a little bit goofy, and I'm sure he's going to love hearing all of the songs that his uh, family members sing. Bear would know them from his father, Rasp, and I'm sure he would share them with Scarab, too. These two old lions on some of their very last days would love nothing more than to uh, share their songs with the babies. Scarab is literally just about to pass away, so it's going to be a hard time for a bear especially, because Scarab was his oldest friend. But luckily, he does have the presence of our last remaining shaman, as she is just about to give birth to her first babies. So while the shamans might be celebrating, her distant cousins have a little bit more on their plate. Unfortunately, Wasp just passed away, but not before giving birth to another potential beacon. And the beacons used to be creatures that were revered, of course. They were seen as such a great omen. But after Melody, it seems like times might be changing. Rhapsody knows that his time is drawing to a close, though. He only has two days left on his lifespan. So I think as he uh, cleans up the nests, maybe pokes around and uh, clears out some of the grass too, leading all the way over to these ports that he knows his family is going to want to use, he would request that uh, Vanta could possibly watch after his son once he passes. Vanta still has a lot of life left on him, and he's also very uh, grateful to this family for taking him in. He probably feels like he's kind of in their debt. But Melody's presence scared him too. He is also very afraid of the wildfires that took away his original family. So I think he would have a little bit of a hard time watching after Ash. He remembers the way that Hornet chased out his own sister, starting all of those rumors in her trail. But I guess for now he will uh, tentatively accept, because surely one little baby can't summon giant wildfires in the grass, right? Surely that's not what caused all of this destruction and damage. We'll go ahead and skip the day though, saying goodbye to our lovely lion, as we say hello to a brand new baby in the nest, with that same omen as well. So it seems like uh, the fires are not going to be leaving us alone anytime soon. Thankfully, I don't see any new ones popping up. 
it seems like it might actually be a little bit cooler than usual in the savannah still, thanks to all of that rain, of course. Moonstone would know better than to believe that this baby is a bad omen, though, because of course her ancestors would tell her otherwise. So I think we'll name this baby Quartz, even though he unfortunately doesn't have the digging paw, so he can't really help his mother out too much when it comes to digging those graves. And that means that uh, she will need to get to work. But we're going to watch this rogue male very closely as we do so, because I don't want him uh, getting too close to any females that would uh, potentially give them sick babies. I have noticed that he has similar immunity genes to many of the creatures in our tribe, especially Jasmine. Their babies would be pretty much guaranteed to be sick. And I don't think Ananame would uh, betray Dragonfly by having a baby with a rogue. So we'll have to uh, just make sure he doesn't get too close. We'll bring Moonstone out of the nest. And then we should be able to have Dukuta scoot over this way to uh, hopefully breed with her. Then she just needs to find a location where she can dig out that grave. And she has plenty up in the north. So we'll have her scoot over here. And on the next turn, she'll uh, get to work on that soil. And maybe we could have Honeycomb toddle his way over to the nest to uh, keep a watch over this baby, of course, and to get to know him a little bit better. With his own unique looks, I mean, I don't think he would be the type to uh, judge anybody by appearances. He is definitely the big goofball of the family, but I'm sure his parents find it very endearing. Let's have Bee place down her nest again, too. Clear out a little bit more of the grass, because on Bear's very final day, we want to make sure that uh, he can at least see his last baby. Then we have some very important changes taking place between all of our adventurers. So Melody would be a little bit afraid to go back to the mainland, knowing the powers that she has, of course. She doesn't want to cause any more trouble by summoning fires in her wake. But Dukirvan isn't so willing to let her disappear. With her help, he's finally starting to understand that there are connections worth more than just the strength they offer. So I think he's going to offer to stay with her. Off here in the tall savanna grass. Maybe they'll even make a home by this ring of ashes. Because what better place would there be for these two creatures to settle down? Somewhere so potentially dangerous. But in the process, I think he is actually going to hand his bluebird feathers over to Dragonfly. Because he knows that Dragonfly will bring them to Ananame, and he knows that the tribe is going to need a better leader. Somebody who could lead them to greatness like he never could. So let's strip him of his bluebird feathers once and for all. This is something that has never happened before in our tribes. It's usually only death that causes the changing of leadership, which I suppose makes it all the more meaningful that Dukirvan is willing to pass them on. So some of our creatures might be surprised to hear the songs coming from Sunspot, thanks to uh, all the songs that he learned as a baby. He would probably be the one most likely to sing of the passing of leadership, just like his mother did before him. More than that, some of our creatures would probably be worried that uh, they ended up succumbing to the flames. So Ananame doesn't really know what's waiting for them once their warriors, their explorers finally come home. We'll have Kirkir go ahead and clear out some of the pathway because I'm sure he's very eager to see his father again. And that reminds me too that uh, he bears a striking resemblance to his uncle, doesn't he? It's very interesting how that turned out. He just has uh, the pink stripes and the pink ram horns, even the pink mane instead of the white ones on Dukirvan, which I'm sure is something that Inaname would notice. And to prevent him from becoming like his uncle, she would make sure that he is very, very devoted to his family. She would instill those lessons in him very early on. But with the rogue male still wandering around somewhere in this tall grass, we want to make sure that Melody has the opportunity to start a little family of her own. So as far as their mutation menus go, we know that this is kind of like a change in heart for Duke Yervan. It's difficult for him, of course, but he's not going to worry about strength 
when it comes to these babies. So we'll place the medium body into his mutation menu to try to breed out the big body that he's wearing, of course, that has made it such a struggle for him to get around the savanna. Melody is much more suited to this lifestyle, thanks to her water body, so it would be great to uh, see some little babies with that too. It'll be interesting to see if they can manage to have any babies without the albinism trait, because he does carry it inside his inactive traits. So we'll place the uh, stripes into her menu, and we'll just cross our fingers that at least one of their babies is born with Adam's stripes. So we'll have him use his turns to breed with her. That way she should be safe from the wandering male, and we'll have her use her last turns to pick up the berries for the extra food. Then Dukirvan can carve his way back into the grass, and we'll see if they can uh, set up a nest somewhere close by this ring of ashes. I think that's where she's going to uh, try to raise her children. And meanwhile, we have this tiny pile of ashes that I guess a Dusty can poke around in, giving him his namesake, of course. It looks almost exactly like his fur. Very fitting that he was born on this island. I bet he's going to uh, want to investigate many of the fires in the distance too. His brother Heatwave, not so much. He doesn't look like he's having the best time underneath that uh, hot savanna sun. But now that he's grown a little bit more, Jasmine doesn't need to uh, worry about staying right next to him. And maybe he could scoot on over to this berry bush to give us a little bit more food. Jasmine is just watching eagerly for a sunspot. She hears that beautiful music and she wants to make sure that he makes it out okay. We'll have Hornet go ahead and uh, hopefully clear out a little bit more of this camp. I feel like this is probably the rogue male's home. He has the berries to eat, he has a little nest to uh, rest his head in, and Hornet did actually take quite a shining to this little guy. So it wouldn't surprise me if uh, he invited him to stay where he lives. But Ash, meanwhile, since this is Rhapsody's very final day, why don't you uh, scoot on over here and hopefully get to know Vanta a little bit better? He's still very nervous, very wary and afraid that this is going to bring misfortune upon his shoulders. But he wouldn't want to give away his feelings, especially not to Rhapsody, and especially not to Ash himself. So he's going to keep that all tucked away deep inside him. But I think we're ready to skip the day again. So as a bear is just about to pass away, let's see what the uh, second baby between them is going to look like. Oh my gosh, so much like your father. Oh, and she's carrying the platypus beak in her inactive traits again. So we could possibly pull that out in the future just like her brother. The mask is actually quite interesting to see on our babies again. Not too many of them have been born with that recently. And I like how it has that pink color to it. So I think we're going to name her Petal, since it reminds me of a little flower. And yet again, perfect for our line between our honeybee and our bear. So we'll have Quartz toddle his way out of the nest too. Maybe play around with Honeycomb a little bit. And then it'll be time for Moonstone to get to work. So she can actually dig out a grave right where a bear passed away. And then she should be able to dig out another one right next to it too. So she can lay both uh, our lion scarab and bear to rest side by side, right next to the cactus plants and the nurseries that they were so very fond of. So this place can be remembered in their honor. Maybe they'll be able to watch over this place still as uh, our little lion guards. Let's make sure there are no more fires in the distance though. No more fires sprouting up by our nest that we need to be concerned with. So far so good. So hopefully that will put uh, Vanta's mind a little bit more at ease as he continues to clear out the area right by all of these ports. He knows that this is what Wasp was hoping for to see all of her babies leave for the next island, just like uh, she took the journey along with our leaders. So hopefully Ash will be able to overcome the stigma on his shoulders, and he can help Quartz convince our tribe to move on. It won't be Melody after all, 
She's going to be far, far away by the time our creatures are ready to pack up and go. But it might be a good time for her to settle down one of her nests, because we do want to make sure that these two can have at least a couple of babies before Duke Kirifon passes away. So we'll have Kir Kir once again help his father come home, bearing the heavy burden of the bluebird feathers, as he uh, scoots over to Ananami's side. So just as Dukiravan figured, he will be passing those straight over to Ananame. He knows that the bluebird feathers belong in her family, not in his. So that officially makes her the alpha of our tribe. She would have many, many questions for him, of course just uh, about the safety of her brother. She wouldn't be able to help but wonder if maybe he did succumb to the flames as she feared. But he would let her know that he is safe and sound, but he is a very changed individual. No longer power-hungry and eager to destroy, he's taken up a family far away, secluded in the savannah grass, and he doesn't intend on coming back. So despite all of the bad blood between them, I'm sure she would still feel a little bit sad knowing that he's gone. Like it or not, the two were family, and she knows that that always comes first. But as Heatwave gathers up all of the berries, we'll have a Jasmine go ahead and breed again with Sunspot, because I'm sure she is eager to see their family grow some more. Especially as her babies are getting old enough to toddle their way out of the nest. They don't need her hanging around so much anymore, and I'm sure she misses their presence. I think B would probably like to offer up her nest to a Moonstone on the next turn, so she'll be able to have her baby too, continue to usher in that brand new era of shamans, and let their line flourish. That's all of our turns used though, so we'll go ahead and skip the day again. And definitely uh, go take a look at the baby way off in the savannah grass. Oh my gosh. This one is actually not an albino. He doesn't have the stripes, unfortunately. But he has the beautiful green eyes and the orange fur of Adam. So I'm sure that is something that is going to a surprise to Kirvan at the very least because it must mean that he's finally taken his ancestors' words to heart. He has finally understood what they were trying to tell him so long ago, and they approve of the new choices he's made. So I think we'll have these babies keep their musical roots, just like Melody, and we'll call this first little one Medley. Interestingly enough, Dukirvan's acceptance of bonds over strength has made it so this baby should actually be able to survive the savannah pretty well. The big ears and the medium body means that he shouldn't struggle quite as much as his father did. So let's cross our fingers that their second and their last baby too is going to be just as lucky. Jasmine, meanwhile, must be feeling a little bit afraid right now, being reminded of those fires, by her baby's fiery eyes and her smoky white fur. All she can think of are the flames that sprouted up right beside her newborn baby. So perhaps it's with a little bit of fear that she would name her first daughter Wildfire. At this rate, I feel like the albinism is going to just start taking over our entire tribe. I mean, basically every single one of the major families has had an albino baby now. We're just waiting on Ananame and Dragonfly. And I'm sure they're going to have another baby too. In fact, we'll uh, scoot Dragonfly to her side, and we'll see if maybe we can place that second gene into his mutation menu. I asked you guys what you wanted to see, and most of you said the violet eyes would be really nice on their babies. So I think we'll uh, try to breed that into their line next. We'll bring Kira, Kira down into the grass too, to uh, maybe hunt down his brother. Clear out a little bit more of a pathway for him, so hopefully he can go back to the main nursery. Though Valentine might actually prefer to stay out here, because at least he can gather food for all of his family members. He knows that that is still very, very important especially as the new babies are being born. Ananame should be able to use the permanent nest, though, as the new queen of their tribe, and I'm sure everybody is very much looking forward to uh, getting to meet all the new babies. 
Where did your berry bush go, though, Jasmine? I could have sworn that you had one nearby. Maybe it was over here? There it is. And there is all those juicy berries ripe for the taking. So we'll leave Sunspot next to your new baby. Yeah, I feel like she would just need a little bit more space. Sunspot didn't get the chance to see the fires for himself, so he's not quite so affected. But she is uh, very wary after seeing that baby in her nest. Now we can have Little Petal. We'll give her her pink gem too, to uh, remind us of Bear, of course. And Honeycomb is going to need them as well. We'll scoot her right out of the nest so she can play with her big brother and Quartz. And then Moonstone should be able to settle herself down to have her baby here. It would be a, a very spiritual offering too, because she just laid all of these remains to rest. So uh, hopefully the spirits of Bear and Scarab are watching after her baby too. I think it's time that Quartz and Dukuta maybe try to find a little bit of food to pick up for a Moonstone. They can't dig up the roots, of course, but they can at least try to track down some more of those berry bushes. Quartz would actually do pretty good at picking them up. Oh, there we go. And he's very, very good at hunting them down, too. Oh, he knows how to follow his nose. Of course he does, just like his mother. Oh my gosh. Oh, your little friend came out to say hi to you. I was wondering where he was hiding. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this has to be his home. So, uh, Hornet is just hanging out where the rogue male lives, staying by to uh, pick all of his berries and keep himself very, very comfortable. Now, as Vanta and Ash continue clearing out some more of this grass, searching for more uh, resources to hopefully take back to their families, I think we should be just about ready to skip the day. So we have quite a few babies to watch on this turn, but for the first one, let's see what our new little royal baby is going to look like. Oh my goodness! Look at those giant ears! And the orange stripes too! Oh, that's like the opposite of Adam. Oh, that is very, very interesting little one. Blessed by the Balance Sisters to, of course, uh, represent the recent change that their family went through. So I think it would be a good idea to keep this baby's name, just like Adam intended. And then we'll scoot on back to the grass to see how uh, this baby fared as well. Oh, a little daughter. And Melody must be so grateful to see that neither of them carry her curse. So it might just be Melody herself who has to worry about the fires, and her babies will be able to return to their families. With that hope in mind, I think we'll name her first daughter Harmony, and we'll see if she has the heart to send them off on their own as soon as they're grown enough. And likewise, let's just make sure no new fires popping up, because it does seem like it's getting a little bit hotter in the savannas, so we might have to watch out pretty soon. Does this baby have different color eyes, though? Just what we were hoping for in their line. Different color eyes for each of the different babies, so we can name them after uh, maybe different colored gemstones. Unfortunately, once again, just like his brother, he doesn't have the uh, digging paw to really lend his mother a hand, but she still has a while left on her lifespan, so I'm sure we'll get lucky eventually and we'll uh, have a new little grave digger to take her place. But if you guys have any ideas for a name for this baby with his lovely blue eyes, then do let me know. And in the next episode, we'll give him his name too. We'll have to make sure that their babies are taking on those shaman gems because it's so nice to see that our shaman line is thriving again. Moonstone will be able to uh, teach all of her little babies very, very well. They'll know how to uh, put all of our oldest souls to rest and just in time too, because quite a few of them are passing away. But a new era is dawning in the savannah. A new generation is about to take over the island, and I'm very excited to see what's awaiting in their future. But for now, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Bye guys!